Software architecture is the fundamental design of the entire software system. It defines what elements are included in the system, what function each element has, and how each element relates to one another. In short, it is the big picture or overall structure of the whole system, how everything works together. Let's compare this to designing a skyscraper. The architect of the building will design the overall structure. The architect will take many factors into consideration. For example, what will the building be used for? Who will be using the building? What qualities matter most to the occupants? What constraints does the site pose? Taking in factors like these, the architect will create a plan for the building to suit the needs of the occupants. This is similar to designing a software system. To form its architecture, the software architect will take many factors into consideration. What will the system be used for? Who will be using the system? What qualities matter most to them? Where will the system run? The architect will plan the structure of the system to meet needs like these. So why do we need software architecture? Let's look back to our skyscraper example. What would happen if there was no clear design for the building? Each work team would construct their own section and they would each have different views on what is needed. What if one team decides that accessibility is the most important factor to consider, while another team decides that security is the most important factor? The two ideas do not work together and overall, it may not suit the needs of the users. You get conflicts, you get duplication, havoc ensues. That's why having proper software architecture is important, especially for a large software system. Having a clear design of the overall system as a starting point helps to provide a solid basis for developers to follow. Each developer will then know what needs to be implemented and how things relate to meet the desired needs efficiently. Software architecture provides many advantages. One advantage is higher productivity for your software team. Software development becomes more effective because there is a defined structure in place for coordinating work, implementing individual features, or grounding discussions on potential issues. With a clear architecture, it is easier to know where key responsibilities of the system reside and where to make changes to address new requirements or fix failures. Additionally, a clear architecture will help to achieve quality in your software. With a well-designed structure, using principles like separation of concerns, the system becomes easier to maintain, reuse, and adapt. Stakeholders are the people who have an interest in the software system at hand. They are people who will either be using the system that you're creating or benefiting from it in some way. Who are the stakeholders when it comes to software architecture? In other words, who would care about the software architecture? The software architecture is very important to people such as the software developers, the project managers, clients, and end users. Each will have their own perspective. Let's start with the software developers. Like I previously mentioned, software architecture provides many advantages that help the developers to create and evolve software. It makes development easier by providing a strong direction and organization on what needs to be done. Additionally, project managers value software architecture as it gives useful information to identify possible risks and manage the project successfully. A well-defined architecture will help project managers to understand task dependencies, impacts of change, and coordinate work assignments. The clients make the big decisions about the system, like its funding. A clear software architecture will help to communicate coherently and confidently that you know what you're doing. Now, what about the end users of the software? Is software architecture really important to them? Users may not directly care about how the software actually works, but they will care that it works well for them. This is similar to a family who just bought a house. The family may not find the specific architecture of their house to be important, but they do care that the house won't collapse on itself and that it fits their needs as a place to live. Software architecture is effectively expressed and communicated through models and diagrams. One important way that software architecture is presented is through UML diagrams. You will see several UML diagrams to represent the different perspectives to be considered in software architecture. Architecture is the process of creating system level and broad guardrails and guidelines for engineers to work within in order to produce a stable, maintainable, long-lasting system. The architecture of a system is going to vary depending on what particular architectural model or, or um, style you have in mind. Uh, there's many different architectural styles, so each one of those styles has a particular way to describe the architecture that fits in that style. I would say that, that most of the systems that we build are what I would call a service perspective architecture where a system is viewed as a collection of interacting services that by their collaboration 
uh, achieve the goal that you want in terms of what the application does. But there's other architectures. There's architectures that are based on um, uh, data flow where you take something and you process it through a series of stages. And you don't describe those so much as services. You say that the data gets transformed and then it's processed through another transformer. So the architectural style dictates how you describe your architecture. Uh, fundamentally, though, all archi architecture involves doing something because the whole point of an application is to actually do something. So you can ultimately step back and say, what does my application do? And identify the boxes, which are things being done, and the lines, which are the interactions between the way things are done, the, the, the collaborations, or the way that information flows, or the dependencies. So in that, at the very high level, architecture is described by boxes and lines. But really, it's, it's made precise by saying, well, we're going to adopt a particular architecture style. And then there's conventions within that style for how you describe your architecture. I think the architect has to keep a lot of perspectives in their head. And I think one of the key skills of an architect is being able to operate at any number of levels of abstraction. And so if I think about, you know, you have to be able to, to communicate the, the code quality requirements at a very deep level in terms of uh, non-functional things like code coverage and unit tests and things like this, all the way up to worrying about uh, the very, very coarse-grained inter-system interactions in, in potentially in a large company. So we, for example, would have uh, architects get together to talk about how entire groups of systems are interacting together. And those have different kinds of, of design artifacts and they have different kinds of meetings and conversations that lead into that. I know architects who, strange as it may sound, almost they, they rarely deal with actual code or, or detailed technical implementation. They're more about the people, right? It's about bringing together the right other architects or the right product people or the right engineers or the right managers or whatever in order to drive decisions and actually make change. Because if you boil it all down, that's what the architect is there for. They're, help, they're there to help being an agent of change. As a software architect, you pretty much have to keep everybody's perspective in mind. You have to think about the perspective of your customer and what they want, about your business and what it needs, about the engineering teams and how they expect to be able to work and what they need in order to be able to do a good job. Additionally, you have to then keep the perspective of the, the so you have to think, you have to play the long game. You've got to think about the, the quality and the non-functional attributes of the system so that those don't get forgotten and sub-optimized in the short term. The main thing that you have to keep in mind as a software architect is always the question, am I doing something that's adding value to my client? Because if you're not, adding value to your client, then you're not living up to one of your responsibilities, which is to uh, deliver them a product within their resources. Now, what does adding value mean? In many cases, it's uh, actual tangible things like functionality. Uh, it can also be what we, we call the so-called non-functional requirements, such as ensuring that the product is going to be uh, built well enough that over the next decade as they continue to use it and add new requirements that it'll be easy to add those requirements. That's what an architect has to do is they have to say, okay, from the client standpoint, do I have a understanding of my problem and does the application that's being built actually match what my understanding of the problem is so that I can solve my problem? From a developer standpoint, uh, you have to ask, can the developers actually build this thing? There's no way that you can be a good architect without understanding the limitations of construction. 